Samsung phones never always had the best specifications or were never the most powerful phones in the market at least here in India. And in this current time of anti-Chinese sentiments, people seem to be choosing Samsung over other manufacturers and I wanted to figure out why. So I picked up the S10 and used it for a week and here are my thoughts about it and you can consider this my long term review of the Samsung Galaxy S10. So the first thing that immediately stood out in this device is its build quality. Now this is a well built device. It has a glass sandwich design along with stainless steel bands on the edges and it just feels premium. It, ha it has a weight, it has a heft to it and is a dense phone and it feels like it can take a beating and yes it did. It was dropped many times and it has not developed any major scratches. Oh wait, I should put on some b-roll here, right? Oh yeah, cinematic b-roll loading up right now. Haha, <laughs> got him. What? The way the glass shines in the light, the way the stainless steel blinds glitter, all makes you feel like you paid a lot and you have a premium experience and well it is a premium experience and there are some certain things about the design that people don't like such as the overflowing waterfall display and i also have a love and hate relationship with this love because the content you watch on this just flows into the real world and you have an immersive experience a kind which you cannot have on any other device but the thing is the displays are also a hindrance Especially if you're on apps like Instagram where if you back out of a page, you lose all the text you typed on it. The Samsung's gesture navigation has not been the most user friendly. And well, I was typing this big caption, I spent a lot of time on it. And then as I was pressing the post button, I swiped by accident and it took it as a back swipe. So it came back and I lost all the text. So there are certain things like that. You have a lot of issues with the Samsung gesture navigation, but if you use normal navigation bar, all of these issues are gone and this is a very good display. Now, this display is amazing. As I said, the waterfall display makes it so that any content you watch on this just flows into the real world and gives you the kind of immersion that you cannot get from any other device. And the display panel is also amazing. It is a 1440p AMOLED panel, meaning it is crisp, sharp, colorful, vibrant, and bright. Now, it has HDR support, and I watched a bunch of HDR videos on YouTube on this, and I could not go back to any other panel. Every other display just seemed inadequate to me. Now, the color issues on AMOLED displays are also present here, but only in the lower brightness ranges. They are only present if you have the phone on very low to close to zero brightness. But I use my phones only in medium to max brightness, so the colors are perfectly accurate and perfectly fine and I edit all of my photos on this, so there are no visible tint issues. Now, so this display also has a hole punch cutout where the front camera is and the hole punch cutout is laser accurate, meaning there's no dark spots, the display doesn't get progressively darker and well, there's a nifty animation surrounding the front camera when you unlock the phone or when the battery percentage is getting low and I like certain things like this. It makes me feel better that the person who made this device actually took care to craft a beautiful experience. Now, what about the cameras? Now, Samsung's cameras have never been the best. They haven't been the pixels for photos or the iPhones for video, but they are good cameras. Now, it has three cameras, all three of which are useful, unlike other phones which resort to marketing gimmicks and give you sensors like time of flight sensors and macro cameras. All three sensors here are a wide angle, a normal camera sensor and a telephoto two times sensor and well, all three are amazing. If you want to see this camera in use on a video, you can tune in and watch my earlier videos from January and February because those videos were shot on this exact phone. Now, I use the Filmic Pro app and it works wonders for this phone. Now, this sensor has good dynamic range, has good color accuracy and just reproduces any scene you throw at it with relative ease. Samsung camera app also has nifty features like portrait mode and night mode which take these photos to the next level. Now one gripe about this is that you cannot use telephoto camera outside of the stock camera app. That is if you install any third party camera app, you only have access to the normal lens and the wide angle lens. And I feel this is a small issue and that I don't like this. but. It's a given trade-off and, and well, you can always zoom in from the normal sensor to get a 2x crop and it's not that big of an issue but 
it would have been better if we were able to use the 2x lens on third party apps. And the Samsung camera app also has a pro mode but it's also limited to the main camera sensor so if you want any other field of view we are going to have to attach extra lenses to this phone and it just becomes bulkier so yeah so this is not the best camera nor is it a bad camera. It is a good camera and can capture anything you throw at it with relative ease and the images will turn out good. Even after a year and a half of heavy usage and with continuous fast charging, this phone still lasts me a day and a half. And one of the main reasons is the AMOLED display which can turn off pixels when you're not using them. So there are optimizations done and this phone lasts quite a bit. And the software experience is also good. It might not be stock Android or Oxygen OS, but it is a refined skin. Now it has a design that is common across all elements of the UI and shadows the design of the phone and it's a much better skin compared to Chinese skins from Oppo, Realme and Redmi. It has a bunch of features which are relatively easy to find and the skin overall is easy to use. And this phone might not be the most powerful phone. It runs on the Exynos chipset which is an immediate turn off to many people. Nobody likes Exynos chipsets, they find it slower than the Snapdragon equivalents and we don't know why Samsung provides Exynos here in India but it, this phone is no slouch. It can take any task you throw at it and perform it with relative ease. Now it might heat up but it gets the job done. I've played a few matches inside PUBG and Fortnite and it performed well and I shot a 4K60 video and edited it on this phone and exported it all from here and I had no major issues. It was heating up but it never slowed down, it never crashed and it never shut down on me. It's a good phone. It might not be best in any specific regard but it's more of a jack of all trades and we all know how the saying goes. Jack of all trades, master of none. But that's not how the saying actually is. Not jack of all trades, master of none, but often better than a master of one. So with that, I conclude the long-term review of my Samsung Galaxy S10. And I'll see you guys in the next month with a special video hitting your screens pretty soon. See you.